So I've now waited a few minutes for my gel flow to start, and I can see that it's ready for me to SSH in by the, uh, the fact that the state has moved to waiting. So now what I do is I click on the uh, job flow in the grid. Uh, that just refreshes the pane down below. Uh, I then just scroll down, and I see that the public master, master public DNS name has been filled in. So what I do is I, I want to copy this into the buffer. Then I want to change over to the, uh, my SIGWIN uh, session. So what I'm going to do now is run the SSH command. Uh, the SSH command, we use, we use the account Hadoop, so we go Hadoop at, and I, then I'm just going to paste in the master public DNS name. Now that's not all I want, I also want to pass a couple of options to SSH. Uh, the first option that I want to pass is just, of course, the key file that I specified earlier. Uh, so that's SIG drive, C, demo. The other option that I want to pass in is actually a keeper life for the session. Uh, by default, SSH is set up that it will time you out if you don't do anything in your session after two minutes. That's actually not all that good when you're developing a job flow. You often spend two minutes just looking at output and the like, so it actually can get frustrating. So all I want to do is I just want to set the server alive interval to 10, and now it'll just uh, keep alive will be sent every 10 seconds, and the session will stay alive until I purposely close it. So what I do is now is press enter to start, and I'm into the master. So now we can look around the master a bit, but what we're really interested in doing is uh, running the pig, and in particular the pig grunt session. That's the interactive session we use for developing job flows. Uh, to do that, we've actually set up the, it in, in your path already. So all you have to do is type pig, and I'm also going to specify an extra option, uh, which is the dash x local option. So pig has two modes of operation. The default mode of operation is Hadoop mode, where PIG talks to our, the Hadoop services running on the same machine. And of course, Hadoop is good at doing large-scale data processing, so scheduling tasks over multiple nodes and or running multiple threads on each node. However, as, as part of that, Hadoop has all these overheads to do with uh, extra startup and shutdown time of, of jobs. And when we're developing a job flow, what we're most interested in is quick turnaround. We want to know straight away whether we've typed the right command or not. So to help with this, PIC has a local mode, where rather than talking to Hadoop, all the commands are run in process. And so it's, it's only a single thread that runs it, but for a small amount of data, it means we get much faster turnaround on what we're doing. So now into the grunt session. Uh, we, we see the command prompt has changed to grunt. So what I'm going to do now is just take a little bit of look around the basic file system commands that grunt supports. I can see these by typing help. What we see is a long list here of unix type commands that we can use for looking around file systems. To start with, I'm going to use pwd to just look at the working directory. What we see is the grunt shows a prefix for all locations, and so it's showing that we're at the root of the, uh, of the local file system, and I can, I can take a look at that using ls. Now, I, I could look around that file system, but pig actually has support for three file systems, or, or three interesting file systems for, for my demo. Uh, the second file system that supports is HDFS, and I can move to HDFS using uh, CD HDFS colon slash slash, and now I can do an LS and have a look at it. So HDFS is the file system that runs locally on the job flow while the nodes run. It's good for temporary data uh, that needs to be shared between the nodes, but of course when the cluster shuts down, uh, it, it's totally cleared. So the, file, the final file system that uh, PIG supports is the uh, S3 native file system. And this is basically a wrapper around the Amazon S3 service. So to have a look at that, you just need to use the S3 prefix. And in, in, you also have to type a bucket, and the, the bucket that I'm interested in is the Elastic MapReduce bucket. So if we do just do an LS of that, we, we can see its contents. So basically what I want to do now is uh, pull down my data that I'm going to use for the demo. And so to do that, I want to go into the samples directory. Then I know that it's in the pig apache slash input directory. What we have now is a list of, uh, of, list of Apache access logs that I want to uh, process. Uh, now, I, I could tell pig about these, uh, this directory, and it would process it fine. However, the downside is that every time that pig would attempt to run a command, it would be accessing the files in S3, and it would be adding the extra latency of that remote access. Because I'm developing a job flow, what I'm really most interested in is quick turnaround time. So it, it means two things. Number one, I don't want all the logs. I, I just want a sample, so I'm just going to take one log. The other thing is I want them on the local disk. I don't want to be pulling from the remote disk every time. So what I want to do now is just use the copy command within pig, and I want to give it 
the complete S3 path for one of the files, then I want to just give it a, a, location, a location on the local hard disk. So I'm just going to put it in home slash Hadoop. So that copies it there, copies the file down. If I do an ls on that directory now, I can see that it's now on the local hard disk, and so that all my accesses is now are going to be are going to be much faster. So that's the, that's it for this stage. I'm now ready to move on to the next step, which is actually processing the data within the log.